I'm going to go ahead and get this party started. I'm Kat. I am the founder and chief tech ninja of Create Your Change, and I am one of the hosts here at TechSoup Connect Australia. Today, it is my absolute delight to be hosting Kat Miller, who is the founder of Amplify Your Influence. Kat has assisted thousands of people around the world to communicate their more their most authentic message and to build more authority and trust in the marketplace and to positively influence their community. She helps people to create compelling content to attract their ideal clients and presentations to help build more connection, authority, and trust. And I can totally vouch for how awesome Kat is because she I've worked with her on several projects. She's become a great friend and I just cannot say enough good things about her. So rather than me prattling on, let's jump to it so you can experience firsthand how awesome Kat Miller is. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. We actually connected over our surname. So Kat is Kat Miller and I'm Kat Miller and we were like, we have to be friends. <laughs> so thank you, Kat, for having me here. It's such a such an honor, such a privilege, and I'm really excited to share this topic. So welcome those of you that are on live and on the replay. It's going to be a great presentation where you can really take action on what I'm sharing as well. So it's not one of those things where you just absorb a whole lot of information and you don't know what to do with it. This is really tangible things that you can do straight away to make your content more compelling, whether that's content that you're doing for your organization or for your own business, wherever you're showing up and presenting content, whether that's written content or spoken content, this is really going to help you out. Welcome to how to attract clients with compelling content. Like Kat said, I've been doing this for a while and really passionate about helping people craft their message and communicate their unique value through content. And mostly what we do these days is now online. I started my business when there was no Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram or anything like that. And now obviously the world's really changed and most of the content we're doing is online. And of course there's print still going. And so these principles that I'm showing you will be able to transfer into any avenue, any platform. I want to start first of all, by just sharing that wherever you're at in your journey right now, no matter how good you are as a content creator, I want to remind you that there's a next level for you. There's always a next level. So if you're right at the beginning of content creation, or if you've been doing it for decades, I believe that there's something here for you. And what I'm going to take you through is a formula which basically gives you some ingredients that you can in include into your content. And even if you take one of these ingredients and apply it into your content straight away, you can notice a difference. So no matter where you're at in the journey, you can absolutely get clients from your content, even if you have no experience, like you've never done any content creation at all. You have no certifications. You don't need a degree in content creation or literature or English or anything like that to be able to be super effective in your content. Even if you don't have a website, you have no idea what to share. These are all the things that I didn't have when I got started. Or if you're an introvert, a technophobe, or you don't like the limelight and you don't want to stand out, uh, these are all the things that I had fears around when I was first starting out. And I just want to let you know that you absolutely can get clients from your content right now. So my promise to you is that after this masterclass, you'll have a clear formula that you can follow to create compelling content that attracts your ideal clients straight away. Now, I do have a playbook that I've created for you, and Kat's going to drop the link into the chat box where you can access the playbook. And you can go to, if you're watching the replay, you can go to bit.ly slash hta playbook. And Kat's just dropping that in the link. If you're here live, could you just pop a Y for yes in the chat box? If you're able to download it, you'll need to download it in order to, to edit it. So it's not an editable document, it's a master document. So you just need to click on file, download it, and just let me know that you are able to download it. I also have a gift for you for being here. So if you hang around, I will share with you how you can access that gift at the end of the masterclass. How to make the most of the masterclass is, first of all, just take as many notes as you can. 
It will help you retain the information. There are lots of spaces in that playbook for you to make notes. I recommend that you write down any questions that you have and you can either email them to me at the end. If you're watching this on the replay, I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Just send me an email and I'll give you my email address at the end of the presentation. And then if you're on here live, I'm happy to take all your questions. Do your best to focus, put your blinkers on, turn off your phone and give yourself the gift of just being really present to absorb everything I'm sharing. And most of all have fun just pop a an f for fun if you'd like to have some fun while we're doing this just pop an f for fun and thanks for sharing that you have been able to download the playbook that's awesome all right let's do this team so first of all i want to let you know that there is really four main problems that most people face when it comes to creating compelling content and you might want to write these down the first problem people have is that they don't have a content strategy so they're randomly posting content. They're posting content when they feel like it or when they're inspired or when they think, oh my goodness, I need to get more clients or I need to do it. I need to create a content plan. And there's no kind of overarching strategy. So it's so important that we have a strategy. It doesn't need to be rigid and inflexible and it doesn't have to be like a three-month content plan or anything like that. But if we have a strategy, we know the purpose of our posts. We know what the reason we're doing that video is. Maybe it's to invite someone into a strategy session with us. Maybe it's to just engage people. Maybe it's to overcome some limitations that people have. But every post should have a purpose. And that's why we have a strategy so that you've got an overarching plan that you're following. The second problem people face is they don't have content skills. So they don't have skills to create great content that's influential. And Copywriting is the art and science of creating words that influence. And when it comes to influence, it's not about manipulation or being pushy or you know, trying to get people to do what you want. I talk about elegant influence, which is influence that helps people to get what they want. And when we help enough people get what they want, then we will automatically get what we want, which is for most people I work with, more clients, more income, more impact, really making a difference so that our content is not just interesting or entertaining, thank you for the love cat, <laughs> but it's actually influential. It's actually changing someone and inspiring someone to take action for positive change. The third thing that people don't have or the problem people have is they don't have a great content structure. So the way their content, their structure and their content isn't grabbing attention, isn't speaking to the ideal clients, isn't really influencing them to want to take action. So they're not sure how to actually structure it, whether that's a video script or whether that's a piece of social media, like a caption that you put or a LinkedIn article or an email. If you don't have a structure, which is what I'm sharing with you today, you can just show up and throw up. You can just put some words down and put it out there and it doesn't actually do the job of influential content that actually compels people. And then the fourth thing is that people don't have content support. So they're trying to do it on their own. I've got a friend who works for a company in the city here in Sydney, and she's a copywriter for them. And she often tells me that she goes in and has these meetings with her boss and her boss is constantly helping her and constantly supporting her in her content. So you're, it's not a lone ranger journey. And when I'm releasing a landing page or a sales funnel or a, an email marketing campaign, I always get people to have a look at it because we can only see from our perspective. And when other people have their eyes on our content, especially when we have expert eyes on our content and we get that support, then we can get feedback. And that's how we grow. That's how we improve the skill. So those are the four main problems people have. What I'm going to talk to you about today, because we've got limited time, is the structure. So out of those things, everything I could talk about, I want to talk to you about the actual structure of the posts. If we don't have the structure, the challenge if we don't have a good structure in our posts is that like it's almost like having this great offer without the content strategy, without the structure, without knowing how to actually reach people's hearts and minds. I think of it like having a Porsche or having a beautiful car and leaving it in your garage. No one gets to see it. The purpose of this car is for it to be out on the road, doing its job, living its purpose. And sometimes people have amazing experience and knowledge that can help people, 
but they're not taking it out into the world in the way that they really could to the maximum potential that they could. And so the challenge is if you don't have a good strategy, you don't really know what you're doing, it's like you're at an untapped gold mine. And you've got all this incredible knowledge and experience and skills, but you haven't organized it in a way that is digestible for people, where people can actually absorb it and be moved by it, actually be shifted by it. The other thing that happens if you don't have a good content plan and a content structure is that people can't find you. A lot of people that I work with, they are absolutely incredible. It's just that people, not enough people know who they are. They're not making a big impact that they could be making because people just can't find them. And when we start creating this compelling content, they start attracting more and more people who they can help. And then the third challenge is that you can expend a lot of energy without getting much return on your investment. So you're just constantly trying to put out content. It's not working. It's not really making the difference that it could make. When you've got a structure, all of that can change. So the opportunity that you have is that when you have a really great compelling content structure is that you can consistently get rewarded for your efforts. Just pop a yes uh, or a why for yes in the chat box. If you want to be actually rewarded for all your effort, for crafting a beautiful written blog post, you actually want to feel a reward for that, for all that hard work, for doing a video and pouring your heart and soul into it, to not just have crickets, not have no views on your video. You actually want to be rewarded for it. Yeah, for sure. The other thing that can happen when we get this right, when we get this working, is that your content really makes an impact. It cuts through, it gets noticed, it gets seen, and people start almost being obsessed and addicted to your content because they just, they're moved by it. It's not just, oh, yeah, I've heard all that before. It actually makes an impact. I'd love you to write this down. Your content is the bridge to someone's breakthrough. Your content is the bridge to someone's breakthrough. You can create content that actually leads to a breakthrough. How powerful is that? How awesome is that to think I can create a bridge, I can create a blog post, a video, an article that can actually cause a breakthrough for someone. That's incredible. So let's look at what makes content actually compelling. What is it that makes content compelling? I want to share with you the attract formula. This is <clears throat> a formula that I created that basically speaks to the subconscious mind. If you have a look up at this iceberg here, you'll see that only about 10% of the iceberg is sticking out of the water. And the 90% under the water is really how people make their decisions. It happens at an unconscious level or a subconscious level. So most people, when they're scrolling their phone, when they're looking through LinkedIn and scrolling through Google, they are not searching specifically for logical information. Often what really influences us and what really draws us in, what is compelling is happening at a subconscious level. So when you're just kind of clicking back and scrolling on your phone, what's happening is that our subconscious mind is making the decision on what to stop, what's going to cause us to stop scrolling, what's going to stop the scroll. So that's often happening, not at a highly logical level, but more at a primal level, more at, is this going to be boring? Is this going to be complicated? Is this going to be actually against my values and my beliefs and my philosophies? Or is it going to actually draw me in and get me to stop and pay attention? So the attract formula is seven ingredients that you can insert into your content. It's a tool that you can use for the rest of your life when you're creating content. I usually share this with my one-on-one -on -one clients, my group coaching clients, and people are constantly using this attract formula in their content. It's a structure that you can follow. Think of it as ingredients or elements that you can insert into all of your content. And this tool you can use for the rest of your life. Just drop a Y if you're excited to have something to follow, a structure that you can use anytime and not have to do so much thinking, not be like, oh my gosh, blank piece of paper or blank word document and blinking cursor. Has anybody had that before? Just give me a wave if you've had that feeling of, oh goodness, where do I start? Cool, you are totally in the right place. So if you have a look at the playbook, I've put some spaces there where you can start filling out these seven different ingredients. 
and I'll just talk through them. And if you can make notes as you go, these can ideally, these can be done in order. And I do recommend that you follow them pretty much in order, but you can also insert pieces of them to just bring some oomph to what you're doing. So you could, for example, look at a blog post that you've written or an article and actually go, oh, this ingredient's actually missing. I'm going to insert that ingredient. But if you're starting from scratch, you can actually follow it in order. So if you have a look on page, let me just grab the page number. Page nine in the playbook. Page nine is where the attract content formula is. And you can start making notes on page nine. Let's do this team. Just drop an R for ready if you are ready for the formula. If you're ready, drop an R. All right, let me just do something here. Bring that up. Okay, so the first one, the A in the attract content formula is attention. Attention, just like this peacock <laughs> is loving having his beautiful feathers up, grabbing attention. This is what we need to do online. We need to grab and maintain attention. Write that down, grab and maintain. We could grab attention by using an email subject line that is like clickbaity and it's like evokes this attention and you click into the email and you're like, oh, just give me a wave if you've ever had that. You've, oh, this sounds fascinating. You open the email and you're like, oh, it was actually one of those subject lines that was just designed to just get me doing it. Yeah, it's a little bit, for me, it just feels a bit inauthentic. I open it, I'm like, really? Like you just did that to get me to open it. It's actually not to do with the subject line. So we need to grab attention by, to stop the scroll, but we also need to make sure that we maintain the attention because if we just grab it and then you open the email and people are like, oh, disappointed, you grab the attention, but you can't maintain it. So there's a few ingredients that I recommend when it comes to attention to make sure that people aren't just, you're not just grabbing their attention, but you're keeping attention. Attention is priceless online. It's one of the hardest things to get online is people's eyeballs on your content. So here are the three ingredients. The first one, there, there are three things that I recommend that you can do to grab attention. And I recommend you pick one of these three. The first one is a relatable question. A relatable question is something that's designed for people to say yes, straight away, a fast yes. And because we're dealing with the subconscious mind, you may have heard of the hind brain, the hind brain or the lizard brain or the reptile. Just give me a wave if you've heard of the hind brain or the lizard or the reptilian brain. Yeah, so that's the oldest part of our brain and it's constantly scanning instinctually. So the, when someone comes across our piece of content, they are thinking from their hind brain. It, it, it moves up the brainstem. So we move up the brainstem. So the first thing that we're doing to grab attention is speaking to the hind brain, essentially. And the hind brain is very simple. It just takes commands. It's not like the prefrontal cortex, which is the highly, the executive functioning. It's just like very simple. So very simple, relatable question. Are you stuck with this? Does this frustrate you? Yes. We want just people fast yes, fast yes. So one or two or even up to three questions. I wouldn't recommend more than three questions, but one, two or three relatable questions. By relatable, directly speaking to your audience, your ideal audience. So not just to everybody, not vague, not do you ever feel overwhelmed, but it's more do you ever feel overwhelmed with this? And it's very specific because when someone's scanning, they are looking for what's in it for me. That's the question that they're constantly thinking. You might have heard of radio station, WIFM, what's in it for me? So people are always scanning what's in it for me. And if your question or your statement that you're starting with is too vague, then people can just scroll past it. So the more specific, the better. So relatable question, very simple, not too long, not where someone has to think a lot but just a very clear yes. The next one is a bold statement. A bold statement can stop the scroll. So if you say something that's not just a, oh yeah, but it's, wait, what, what? Hang on a second. So you're making, think of the juiciest, most powerful, punchy thing that you can about your topic and put that right at the top. Because the first part is the most important. The headline, the title, the email subject line is the most important. We've got to have it punchy. It's got to be what's in it for me. So if we make a really out there statement, it could be a little bit contrarian, 
it could be a little bit controversial, that gets a lot of engagement as opposed to just, yeah, I've heard that before. So if you can think of something that's going to really grab people's attention, that's a bold statement. Or the third one is a belief shifting fact. So you can make, a, you can share a fact, a statistic, a piece of data, something that, that is, whoa, you, know, you might say something like 80% of your marketing comes down to your words. And someone's like, whoa. And it shifts their belief from, oh, I thought it was, I need to do Facebook ads, but you're saying it's actually the words that I'm using. That's the thing, just as an example. So anything where you have a fact and it just shifts someone's belief. So they think it's this, that's the problem, but you're saying it's actually this. So that shifts their belief. Like, oh, I thought it was that, it's actually this. Influential content shifts people's belief. It gets them thinking, oh, my perspective was here, that this is where the problem is. Because if they knew that it was here, they would have done it. They don't realize that it's actually here. So it takes some crafting, it takes some thinking to get this, but attention is the most precious thing we can get online, is someone's attention. So this is the most important thing that we need to make sure that we've grabbed their attention. Just pop a Y for yes, if this is, if this is making sense, if you're getting this. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. All right, let's have a look at number two. Actually, before we go to number two, I want to just add something here. When it comes to grabbing attention, we want to repel the wrong people and we want to attract the right people. So that's why I'm making a bold statement. Some people don't like doing it because they're like, oh, it might put some people off. And I say, good, good if it puts some people off because we want to actually repel the wrong people who it's not for and clearly go, hey, no, move on. This is not for you. We want to show them right up front, don't bother stopping the scroll because this is not for you. So when you know your audience and you know what they're struggling with, we do what's called in copywriting, entering the conversation that they are having in their head. And if there's anything that I talk about more than ever to my clients when it comes to grabbing attention, it's always about entering the conversation that someone is already having. This is a quote by Robert Collier. Enter the conversation already taking place in the customer's mind. One way we can do this, just a very simple way we can do this, is actually really connect and engage with our ideal client in our imagination before we start crafting the content. Very few people I speak to do this and they write from their own lens and they forget that whoever's reading it has a completely different perspective on life. So we can't speak to them from our world. We've got to think what is going on in their mind? What are they thinking about today? Where are they like six months, one year, five years, 10 years behind you in terms of the knowledge and learning that you've done. We've got to meet them there. We can't meet them here where we are. We've got to meet them where they are. So enter the conversation that they're having in their mind. I really like how Aaron Arundel took this one step further and he said, enter the conversation already happening or already taking place in the customer's heart. The customer's heart. And so this is, one step further than just connecting with their mind, we're connecting with their emotion. We're connecting with how they're feeling. If we can create a feeling, if we can shift their feeling through our content, then that's going to really move them. That's going to compel them, engage them, compel them, and that's going to influence them. So we need to not only think logically in our content, but remember that 90% below the surface, the 90% it's the subconscious mind. That's what drives decisions. And a lot of content is very well thought out and logical. But as human beings, we make a lot of our decisions subconsciously and emotionally. And so when we meet them with what emotion they're feeling, not just data, facts, stats, but the feeling, we start to move people. All right. So that is attention. I spent a bit more time on that one because it's so important. Let's go to the next one, which is tension so we grab attention and then we start building some tension one of my friends worked for one of the biggest sales one of the biggest business companies in the in australia in sales and she was constantly trained in how to influence people when it came to selling and one thing that she learned that she said was the best lesson that i learned is that tension is the chemistry of sales 
tension. So we think that we just, we don't want to create tension in our audience, but all good speeches, if you look at, there's a TED talk called The Shape of a Speech. And it basically said all the best, the great speeches of all time, the best speeches, the speeches that moved the masses, like I have a dream speech, Martin Luther King. They all follow the same format of tension relief. And so I teach this to my clients in all of your presentations and all of your content, think about relieving tension and creating tension. And a lot of people don't want to do this. They just want to talk about the nice, positive, fluffy stuff. But if we don't actually stir up tension in somebody, they won't want to act. We act because we feel tension. We're like, I can't say the same. I need to change. Even the most microscopic, Gop it, little change. It happens because we have some tension in our body and we want to change it. So, if we want to be elegantly influential, yes, we need to help relieve tension, but we also need to just turn it up, amplify it a little bit so that people are starting to feel, oh my goodness, I need to actually change. So, the tension piece is there are three ingredients for tension. Thank you, Kat. The first thing I recommend is that you talk about a specific problem. Like I mentioned in attention, we want it to be specific, not general. I also recommend that you lay out scenarios. Scenarios are basically like dropping someone into a scene. Imagine you're at the cinema and the ads are over and the lights go down and you're dropped into a scene. And it's a scene... There's things happening in that scene. The character is introduced. Maybe the camera is panning across the room. And straight away in a movie, we're dropped into a scenario. And we do this through imagery. And we can also do this using kinesthetic language and using auditory, auditory language. So it's not always just visual. However, visuals is sometimes the fastest way to get someone into a scenario. Because if you can get them into a scenario, that actually starts to create that tension so you might say have you ever been have you ever been sitting at your desk like I like I did today have you ever sat at your desk and you've got a blank document in front of you you've got a blinking cursor and you don't know where to start I basically just dropped you in very small imagery and straight away you're like yeah or have you ever felt frustrated because you just your content's not engaging with people or people aren't absorbing it so straight away you've got this feeling kind of set it or have you ever said to yourself, I'll never be a good writer? So we're using visual language, kinesthetic feeling language, and auditory language, and we're laying out a scenario. The third ingredient is the symptom. So instead of just talking high level, we're actually going, looking at the symptoms of the problem. And when people feel like you really understand the symptoms that they are having, let's say you're a relationship coach and you're writing a piece of content to help someone engage better with their partner you might say something like do you ever walk down the hallway of your house and you walk past your partner and you don't even look at each other and you just wish that you had that connection and you just feel disconnected and you feel sad because you can't even remember the last time you really locked eyes and smiled at each other and so you're creating this scenario and then when it's symptoms you can say things like and what this is causing is for you to just feel like housemates instead of lovers. Do you remember back when you were just met each other and it was all romantic, but now, you know, you're just leaving coffee cups all through the bedroom and you're just getting frustrated and you really don't know if this is what you want. And you, you just can't see this happening for the next five, 10 years. You just see annoyance when you think about your future. So now we've started to talk about the symptoms of their problem and drop them into that scenario and future pace them into the future that if things don't change, this is what potentially could happen. Can you see it? Could you just pop a wife a yes if you're kind of getting it? I know it, sometimes it can be a, a lot to absorb. I just want to make sure it's really clear. Yeah, awesome. So it takes a bit of crafting. But this one ingredient, if we can get this and start inserting this into our content, it really makes it pop. It really makes it come alive. For that tension, the next one is the next T in the attract formula is trust. Is trust. Trust, we cannot influence people if there's no trust. People won't keep reading or watching our content if they don't trust us. 
And so we need to develop trust as quickly as we can. People buy when they know, they like, and they trust someone, especially if you're a service-based business. Products can be a little bit different. There's got to be trust there, but if you're selling yourself or a service you provide, it's even more important that they really trust what you're saying. So here are the three ingredients for trust. Evidence, the three E's, evidence, experience, and education. Evidence, can you show your credibility? Why should they listen to you? Can you just drop a little piece saying something like, over the last 18 years, I've helped thousands of people to get this result. Can you say, over the last five years of studying X, Y, Z, or since I qualified as a results coach, like what evidence can you give? What experience do you have? And then how can you educate people in a way that they go, he knows or she knows what they're talking about? Because when we educate people, when we organize our knowledge and we share, we educate people, they're like, oh, wow, I get it. I'm learning. That's valuable. And I trust that person because it's not just, oh, yeah, I've heard it all before. One of the key reasons people don't turn up to a presentation or read the whole of your blog is they think they've heard it all before and they don't want to waste their time oh yeah I've heard it all before but if you teach them something new and you consistently teach them something new and or you teach them something that they've heard before but you're saying it in a slightly different way that builds massive trust would you agree think about the people that you're following Think about the people that you, let's say you listen to their podcast or you follow them on YouTube or you read their blogs or you read their books. Typically, there's these three E's, evidence, evidence, experience, and education. All right, how are we tracking, team? Are we good? Is everybody good? Just pop a wife a yes if you're tracking. I'd love to know. I'd love to just take a quick pause. What's something that's stood out for you so far? Just pop in the chat box. What's something that's just been like a gem or, a, oh yeah, I've heard that, but that was a really good reminder. Or is there anything that I've said that you've written down and you've gone, oh yeah, that kind of stood out for me. Is there anything specific? Just pop it in the chat box. Kat Scott, we act because of tension. Yes, repel the wrong people and attract the right people. Grab and maintain attention. Night. Nice. Tension is the chemistry of sales. Up the fire of tension to get them to change. Yeah. Tension and relief. Nice. It makes sense when you think about it that we often don't change unless we feel inspired and motivated to change. Sometimes it's because of the vision of what we're moving towards and sometimes it's the pain that we're moving away from. But either way, for us to get out of our comfort zone as humans, it takes a shift. We don't just do it for no reason. We don't just wake up one day and go, oh, I'm going to run a marathon tomorrow or I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to, I'm going to write a book. There usually is like attention, like I've been putting that off. I want to change. I really want to meet a partner. I'm going to do something about that or I'm going to start budgeting and looking at my finances. When we make a change in our life, it's usually because we feel a sense of frustration in the comfort zone. The comfort zone starts to get a little bit uncomfortable. Engage in my imagination before I write my content. Yeah, that one thing can shift everything. Just go into there, imagine that you're them. Just looking through their eyes, thinking, okay, it's Wednesday afternoon. What are they up to? What are they doing? What are they struggling with? Where are they stuck? What's going on in their life right now? Really walking in their shoes that can just take your content to a whole new level. And it's just sometimes just remembering to do it, <laughs> just reminding ourselves to do it. I need constant reminders to do it. Sometimes I'll write a whole a whole post and I'm like, oh, that was just from my lens. I need to go back and rethink this from their lens. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. All right. Are we ready for the next one? I know there's a lot coming at you. Hopefully you're making notes and getting some good value. The next one is relatability relatability we want to relate to our audience if you think about trust in order to build trust we're talking about ourselves right we're giving evidence we're talking about us experience we're educating them but a lot of it's about us it's about our credibility and because people are always thinking what's in it for me sometimes when we talk about how great we are it can depolarize people so people can it's like you can put yourself on a pedestal. 
Whereas the relatability, bring, it, it brings you back into that balance again. So if someone's just always talking about how experienced they are, how amazing they are, all these things that they've done, and there's no kind of showing the struggle or being vulnerable or just showing up as a human, then who would agree that when you have a vulnerable conversation with someone, you just feel more connected to them? Have you even have you ever had that really vulnerable conversation and then afterwards you're like, I just have more, more like for them, more love for them, more trust, more affection for them because they've been really honest. So when people share their struggle and they say, hey, this is actually really hard for me. Not this was hard for me 10 years ago and now I'm perfect, but actually I still find this hard. Like when I just talked about the ideal client dropping into them, I just shared, hey, I still forget to do this because I do. So if we're showing up and educating, but when we don't have this element of relatability of like, this is a human, she has struggles just like me. She's not trying to elevate herself or himself over me. She's sharing from her experience, but it just balances it. So it's like credibility, relatability, credibility, vulnerability. So yeah, it's an authentic, it's being authentic. And I know that word is a little bit overused now, but if you think about the people that you most connect with, think about the closest people to you, the people that you are so connected to, typically it's because they are so authentic. They are being their authentic self. And instead of your content having to prove something, you're just sharing. And when you're sharing rather than proving, it's way less exhausting. It's way more fun for you and your audience. So the three ingredients of relatability, humanness, vulnerability, and connection. Humanness, talking about your everyday life, talking about your everyday stories, not always sharing all of your highlights, but sharing some of the tough stuff, sharing what you got out of the tough stuff. There's a difference between sharing your bleeding wounds that you're still haven't resolved yet and sharing your scars when you share your scars typically you've got some wisdom from that challenge you've processed it all the way through and you've actually drawn some lessons from it so when you're sharing a story that's really tough it's not just dumping out all of your dirty laundry online it's saying hey I went through this or I'm going through this and this is what I'm learning or this is what I've learned then there's value for other people then it's like, wow, she's real, she's human, she's vulnerable, she's sharing, and I'm building a connection from that, this realness. So yeah, I recommend that you share your scars, not your wounds. It doesn't mean that you've had the scars 10 years. You could, maybe it's still still on that process, but if you're really triggered still from it and you've got zero wisdom and lesson from it, I recommend you wait till you've got some wisdom because otherwise it's just all about yourself and it's not about how can that actually help my audience. I've seen people do this on stage where they've shared something really raw, but they haven't turned it into a lesson. And it's kind of like, it, it almost feels a bit like what's in it for the audience. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that, but you can tell it's not, they haven't thought of it in terms of like, how can I impart some wisdom? So relatability, it just gives that beautiful balance between Yes, you have to talk about yourself. You have to. If you don't share your credibility, if you don't share that you're awesome, no one's going to know. Sometimes we just have to do it and it's hard. I, I really struggled with this. I hated being in the spotlight. I'm an introvert. I hated the limelight and I really struggled to put myself out there online. It took me a long time to do it, to even show up on Facebook Live. I put it off and put it off and put it off. And I got really stuck in perfectionism. And really, it's just fear. It's fear of being judged, fear of what people think of you. And then I remember seeing this quote, and it said, if you're authentic, nothing bad can happen to you. I remember thinking, wow, if you're truly authentic and someone slags you, it won't phase you because you know that you're being authentic. So it actually doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. So easy to just block and delete. But we often hold ourselves back from being fully authentic online because we're, we're scared of judgment, rejection, all of those people-pleasing fears that we can have. And that can really hold us back from sharing our life. And if you're truly authentic, like if you're copying other people, ripping other people off, 
then yeah, some bad things can be said. But if you're like, no, that's genuine, that's authentic, you can feel really confident in that. The next one is assistance. Assistance. This is where we assist people. Excuse me. Sorry, I've just got a frog in my throat. I'll just grab some water. So the assistance part is where we actually help people. And assistance is, and you might want to write this down, this is where we relieve tension. So we have created some tension, but we also need to relieve some tension. If all of our content just made people tense, then people would stop reading it. <laughs> so this is the balance to the tension. We actually release some tension for them. So if you think about your post, it's going to create some tension, it's going to release some tension. So we help people, we teach them some cool stuff, they get some value from it, and then we reestablish the need. We actually go back a little bit into tension before we invite them to take a next step action. So if you think of whole posts, it's not just build tension, relieve tension. It's build some tension, relieve some tension by helping them. But we also need to make sure that they're, we haven't helped them so much that they think, oh, I can just go and do it on my own now. We need to make sure that there's still enough tension there so someone's any more. I know that article is not going to change my life. I, that's inspired me. It's given me some good tips, but I actually need your call to action. So we assist them, we help them, we educate them. I'll give you the ingredients of these, which is relieve tension, teach and shift to believe. So we relieve tension by teaching them something cool. And then we shift a belief. One of the most valuable things we can do is shift someone's belief. Because if you think about transformation, if you think about change, the only reason we change is because we change the belief. It always starts in our thoughts first. It starts in our thoughts, then we start feeling it, and then we start acting. So if someone's going to make a change, which is what influence is we've inspired them to take a, a new action, there actually has to be an element of them just changing a small belief so value is not just how to tips seven tips for this value is when someone sees things differently think about a time where you have made a, an incredible change in your life maybe you shifted a habit maybe you gave up a bad habit maybe you started a new habit actually just pop a couple of habits that you've changed in the chat box what are some habits that you've changed in your life because there'll be many just pop Pop a few into the chat box. I'd love to know what are some habits you've changed. So it could be giving up smoking. It could be giving up fast food every single night. It could be starting walking every day. It could be meditating, journaling. It could be changing a job, breaking up with a partner that was bad for you, cooking better. Jane says, I get up at 5 a.m. That is an awesome habit, Jane. Wow, I need to learn how to do that. <laughs> walking regularly. <clears throat> So for you to change that habit, I want you to think about when you change that habit, what happened, what preceded that habit? It was typically a change in thinking. It was a, typically a change in perspective. So even if it was a microscopic belief change, there's always a change in belief. Does that make sense? It always starts at the thought level. So if our content can do that, if our content can get someone having a different perspective on something, and this is fun. This is where we can get really super creative and have fun with it. I'm constantly thinking, what's the way that I can shift someone's view of something so they actually take action? These diagnoses, that would do it. That would get you cooking better, right? So tension, shift in belief. Oh my goodness, I'm believing that it actually doesn't matter or that I've got plenty of time or this is so it's fine. To so, oh, if I don't shift this, then potentially the trajectory I'm on is poor health. I remember I used to be a weight loss coach and I remember this woman came in really morbidly obese and her family just kept saying, oh, we love you as you are. And that's good. We should love people as they are. But she needed a perspective shift on what was going on because her BMI was like 40 something. And she said, oh, what does that mean? And I said, it means if you don't change you're potentially going to have a heart attack and all that those family members that say that they love you are going to lose you. And it, it was so hard for me to say that. I just wanted to give her a big hug and say, it's okay. It's all okay. You don't need to change. But she did. She did need to change if she wanted to stay alive. So sometimes it's just a shift in perspective will get us to move. Imagine the power 
of our words, when it comes to our content, that someone shifts a belief and their whole life changes. The trajectory that they're on shifts. It's so powerful, the power that we have at our fingertips in our boy. It's truly magical. And when I think about it, I've actually got goosebumps. When I think about the power that we have to change someone's life, to literally pick up our phone and do a Facebook Live and impart a message and someone say, oh my gosh, I really needed to hear that today. I really needed that message. Super powerful. Thank you for sharing. Excuse me. I don't know what's up with my voice today. All right. The next one is curiosity. Curiosity. So let's talk about curiosity and why it's important. I'd love you to pop in the chat box. Why do you think curiosity is important? Why do you think we need to create curiosity? If we tell them everything that they need to know about a topic, why do you think that's a problem? Why do you think it's important to have curiosity? By curiosity, we're getting people almost like there's a missing piece and the news does this incredibly well. After the break, we're going to talk about how this man went flying down the highway on a train. It's drama, right? And we're like, oh my goodness, I need to watch until after these ads. I need to find out what happened. Or when you're watching a Netflix show and they leave this massive cliffhanger and it's like, watch next episode. I'm like, no, it's 11 o'clock at night. I need to go to bed, but I have to watch it. Has anybody got any shows like that? Cat says Cobra Kai. <laughs> like you have to watch it. It's a curiosity. Love is blind. The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, now I want to watch those. Money Heist is one that just does it brilliantly. They got me staying up till 4 a.m. Just couldn't not stop watching. It's crazy. So curiosity, without curiosity, thank you for sharing. They won't be interested enough to want to learn more. Yeah, they're just like, oh, yeah, done. I've heard it all. It gets their attention and interest. Yeah, Jane, it's so true. Outlander. So think about what are they doing to create your curiosity? So here are the three ingredients. They're planting seeds in your mind, they're opening loops in your mind, and they're creating desire. Planting seeds that they're putting an idea in your mind and you want to know more about it. They're opening loops in your brain where you're like, that loop is open, I need to close it. And our brain keeps this loop open until it's closed. And so it hangs off wanting to know the answer. And then it turns up desire for more creates a desire for more for example in this presentation I said hey there's going to be a gift I'm going to tell you about it later and that opened a loop in your mind now it's unconscious you probably weren't thinking about it right now but now you're like oh yeah she told me that I was going to share it later and that's your unconscious mind is keeping that open it wants to resolve it it wants to close that loop and it builds that desire back so we have relieved some tension by teaching them something but now we're opening back up that curiosity before we go into to the call to action. If we don't put curiosity before the call to action, people will be like, why would I take that action? You've solved my problem. I'm feeling relieved. There's no more curiosity. And that leads into the, the final seventh ingredient in the attract formula, which is take action. Please make sure that every single act, every single piece of content inspires some action if it doesn't inspire action it's just merely entertaining which is okay if you want to just entertain people but if you want to impart a message that moves people that shifts people that causes a change we want to make sure that there is always an action now the action doesn't have to be download my free resource come to my workshop your action could be hey drink an extra glass of water today Hey, pop in the comments, what's one action you can take from what you learn? So take action is one of the most important pieces of our content. All right, so I'm just going to pop up the formula one more time so that you can see it all at once, just in case you missed any of them. The attract formula, attention, tension, trust, relatability, assistance, curiosity, and take action. I'd love to know... What is an action you will take based on this new information? What's an action that you can take? Just pop it in the chat box. What's just one action? You might choose one of these ingredients. You don't have to insert all of them. You might choose one of them <clears throat> and just 
put it into your next post. Oh, I need to put more curiosity in my posts. I've recognized that I don't put enough call to actions in my content. I've recognized that I don't create enough tension. So maybe one of these has stood out to you that you want to insert into your content. Maybe you want to attempt doing a whole piece of content that has all seven. So I'd love to know what action you're going to take. And if you're watching the replay, just write it down. Please write down what action you're going to take as a result of hearing this new information. So just pop that in the chat box if you're here live. While you're doing that, I want to share how you can access the gift that I've um that I'm so excited to share with you. It's called the four week content builder. And this is basically a really cool tool that you can use to build out four weeks worth of content. And it's got a whole heap of ideas. It's got five different categories of content that I recommend. It's got examples and it's got a template that you can use. So if you would like to access that and Kat, could you just drop my email address in the chat box as well, please? And just so that we can copy and paste that. So if you'd like a copy of the free tool called the four week content builder, just email me at info at catmiller.com and just write the word gift in the subject line. Email info at catmiller.com and write gift in the subject line. I also want to let you know that if this is uh, interesting for you and you enjoyed it and you want to go deeper. So I've touched on the structure of a post, but if you want to know about all four of the four things that I recommend go into a compelling content formula, I'm doing a whole free one day workshop coming up. So if you, I'm not sure when you're watching this replay, but it's coming up in November. There's two different dates for it. So there's one on a Tuesday, one on a Saturday. So I'm just going to pop the, the link up on the screen for those of you watching the replay. And Kat, if you don't mind just popping that link into the chat box. Also, for people that are on live. So it's a free one-day live workshop called How to Get Clients with Compelling Content, where I'm diving deep into what I shared about today. We're also going to be taking action on it. So it's not just hearing the information, but we're actually going to be doing doing some of the doing, you're going to be taking action in the workshop. It's a it's an interactive workshop where you'll be brainstorming with me and with other people in the event. It's for, it's for women only. So if you're a man watching this, just email me if you would like to get a copy of the recording. The actual workshop itself is just for women only. Um, so if you go to bit.ly slash HTGCWCC, which is basically how to get clients with compelling content dash workshop. So if you go to bit.ly slash HTGCWCC dash workshop and you can check out the details. So just a reminder, your content is the bridge to someone's breakthrough. Your content is the bridge to someone's breakthrough. I want to thank you so much for your attention, for your for those of you on live, for interacting and playing, those of you watching the replay, I encourage you, please take action on this. Write down your action and, and don't just switch this off and go and forget about it. Apply this and get a return on investment for your time. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. In our final couple of minutes, I'd love to take any questions that you have or even just any comments that you have. If you've got any questions, please feel free to either unmute yourself or just pop it into the chat box and ask. I know that is a lot of information to come at you. So did anything pop up that you want clarified or even just like what stood out for you and just pop it in the chat box. Jane, like the create intention part. Nice. Kat says, ask relatable questions. Yeah, something you can do is create like a whole content bank of relatable questions. The more you understand your audience and you really understand their main problems, the more you can create like word banks. I call them word banks, where it's just Google Drive documents of just lists of, phrases and questions and statements so instead of staring at that blank page you can just draw from your word bank or your phrase bank and pull them in is it feasible to create all of your content do you mean jane would you like to just expand on that and jane you should be able to unmute yourself if you just want to ask the question yeah, I have been to webinars where people say it's just not feasible to buy all the content yourself. You might some, but you should be hiring others to be as or whatever content writers to do that or recycling content, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it depends on a lot of factors, like what your end goal is, how much time you've got. So a lot of people that I work with, they they write their own content, but they get 
a VA to maybe recycle. For example, I do a video once a week and then my VA will turn that into social media posts and turn that into articles and send that out as an email. So it's more repurposing what you said. I used to have someone doing some writing for me, but it just didn't feel like my voice. And I just... I think content creation is something that's very personal and very, if you want to create that really good connection with someone, I do think that it's really good if it's your voice and, and yeah, there might, it might be that you grow to a stage where you just don't have the time, but I always encourage people to do as much of it as they can, because it does get you better as a content creator and it does help you develop your voice. I understand it's a skill and I think if you love writing, which I do, then it's not such a chore it's just the skill of being able to write good content for online is mm. else, isn't it yeah. yeah yeah and that's great that you love writing because some people really love writing some people more love speaking and mm. to ideally we do both but it may be that time wise you, you want to stick with what you're passionate about and then you might just do a little bit of the other one but it, you will excel in that zone of writing if that's what you love doing yeah um, yeah, that's wonderful. No, I'm, I'll love to come along to your one-day workshop. Be great. Awesome. Oh, it's great to have you here, Jane. Thank you for the question. It's great to connect with you. I'd love to get to know you better. Hope to now, see you there. Really quickly before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you to speak just a little bit on the one of the last things that you said was every post should have some generate some kind of action. So you're not looking at a call to action as in sign up for my webinar, that kind of thing. So what are the little actions that you can encourage from people other than, because I've tried posts with a comment below on this or that and crickets. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of factors that go into that, like whether it's a mismatch with the audience and the message or whether it's an algorithm thing. If you haven't, for example, when I come back from holiday, I hadn't been posting much or engaging with people or having chats in the DMs. And so hardly anyone was like the post reach was super low. So I'm trying that what I'm going through in the workshop is going through the different types of content. So some is inviting response so that we can get engagement which helps the algorithm and it, it gets Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn to, to take it out to more people sometimes it's just experimenting with the types of questions we answer mm-hmm. us sometimes it like having a different call to action like hey I've got this really cool thing who wants it and just it's testing and measuring like anything in marketing see what our audience responds to so it's trying all different things sometimes you think something's going to work and it's like, yeah that was just my best friend that liked it no one else and awesome but when I came back from holiday I posted something and two people commented on it but I made two sales from it and it just made it made me think I'm so glad I did that because I could have just taken it down and felt discouraged because it hardly got any engagement, but it actually got two clients. So two people saw it that needed to see it. So it just really encouraged me to just keep doing it anyway, <laughs> just keep showing up because you just never know who will find you, if not straight away, but down the track because you've got all this content out there that people can find. Perfect. Love that question, Kat. All right. I realize we've gone five minutes over. So I want to thank everyone for your patience and bearing with us. Thank you for those who joined us live on the call and also those who joined us on the replay. Another special thank you again to Kat Miller, and we'll see you guys next time.